Hey guys, we're back. This is Raldan, and you're watching part two of my Let's Learn Warlock Arena drafting. Um, if you saw the first draft, um, which um, if you haven't, um, check the, there should be a link in the description down below. Um, but here's the deck we're going with. Um, it has a pretty good mix of cards. Um, has a, for my uh, super high-end cards, we've got a Twisting Nether. Um, which can be relatively effective, a Faceless Manipulator, and a Bane of Doom. So hopefully um, those will come in handy this game. Um, I'm really, I'm, I'm kind of torn a little bit because, I mean, there, there's two game plans I could go for, and it's really going to depend upon how my draw looks. I can either try, if, if it looks like I've got the cards, I, mean, I have plenty of cheap cards that are fairly um, powerful, I could kind of go for a bum rush tactic with uh, Warlock. Um, uh, more Hunters. I really hate dealing with Hunters, but... So I'm looking at my hand here. I'm, I'm actually quite happy. I, I think I'm going to keep this exactly as is. This gives me a turn one play that I like. It gives me a turn two play, a turn three play. I mean, it's it, it pretty much has every... It pretty much lets me establish board position at the beginning of the game and if i can get a little bit of an advantage i can start um tapping my life to maintain that advantage um let's see hunters tend to most likely what's going to end up happening is on the second turn he's going to play like a 2-2 two -two or a 3-2 beast so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get my berserker out on the first turn um, he'll think that we're going to trade, but then I'll drop my Blood Imp next turn and give my guy that plus one health and basically give me a, give me a free kill. That, that's the plan, at least. Of course, you know, it's entirely possible that that is totally not at all what is about to happen. And so with this happening, um... So usually hunter traps, it can be one of three things um, that you typically see. It could be an explosive trap, which means if I attack him, um, it's going to do two damage to everything. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and attack him because that'll tell me if that's what it is. And then all it does is it'll trigger the enrage. Yeah. Or it just pops it back in my hand and, you know, honestly, I really don't care. I'll just drop my blue gill warrior attack him that way. All, all that does is a stall. In, in fact, as a Warlock, it, it, it doesn't even matter as much because this will probably just be a card I can use to feed a, uh, a demon or a soul or a, a fell guard or something uh, later on. Um, really don't like Questing Adventurer. Um, I, I, I'm happy to trade a 2-1 for it well before it starts getting any bigger than that. Um, wouldn't mind getting a little some more extra cards out though. So we're gonna get the accolade pain. Hopefully, you can get him running. Um, I'm hoping to set up a turn four where I'll draw a card. I can get another card off the acolyte, and then I can drop my own Twilight Drake and have it be even bigger than his. Um, so let's see what would that require. Attack him right now. My Twilight Drake would come out, and it would be a. One, two, three, four, five. It would be a six, six. So it would already be bigger than his. Um, if I attack into his, then I get another card. And then my Drake becomes a seven, seven. Mm. Honestly, um, for, for what it's worth, uh, six, six is going to be, I'm, I'm going to consider that to be big enough. Um, so yeah, we'll just, uh, we'll go with that. Uh, hunters, the thing, the, the two cards that I have to take into consideration, multi-shot and deadly shot. If he's got multi-shot, then he still has to attack to kill my Twilight Drake. If he's got deadly shot, then it's a 50-50. I'm okay with that trade as well, because I've, I know that I've got, I know that the stuff I've got in my hand is, uh, going to be perfectly fine for dealing with, uh, It's almost kind of funny. Um, 
So yeah, in this instance, um, I'm happy. I'm, we're probably going to Bane of Doom and kill that thing. And we'll get a free card off of killing this thing. But let's do the Bane of Doom first, just to see just to see what this ends up uh, doing for us. Come on, something good. S two out of two, Voidwalker. Um, you could, could get... That, that thing that thing can get you I think all the way up to like a three five taunt and you end up with a one three That's... well free card draw can't complain about that not a bad turn could have gone better um, I'm hoping I mean this would be the time for him to do a multi shot I'm almost expecting he's going to do a multi shot. Okay, so here's where that uh, here's where that dread infernal um, really kind of starts coming in handy. Uh, I've got a couple ways I could play it this turn. Um, one is I drop both of my blood imps, gives plus two health to my acolyte, which then um, lets me basically kill his raid or lets me hit his raid leader, and I still have like one more go. Um, next turn with him. Drawback to that is his stuff. I um, mean, he, he basically gets a little bit of advantage. Or I just trade it, drop my Infernal, and then kill his raid leader. I like that. Because I really want to get this, uh, this Infernal out on the table. And I like it when I can get the Infernal on the table and it can actually, you know, kill something as it comes into play. Because now, now it's his problem. He has to come up with a way to deal with it. I mean, probably a deadly shot wouldn't surprise me, um, but uh, get behind me. now that's not even big enough to even trade for the uh, the infernal. Um, that's not necessarily a good thing for him that he doesn't have something that is beefy enough. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll do that. I'm fine with that. I can get the summoning portal out, and let's see, that would let me play the inventor and the iron for Grizzly this turn. Yeah, I'm happy. I am happy with that. So unlike the previous game, that if you watched it, where I went against a hunter, you, you can kind of see where this this hunter's deck doesn't have the same tricks and tools. Uh, he's like the other hunter's deck was drop a couple threats and then just starts killing. I mean, he he, he just was stacked with uh, all of the hunter damage spells. This guy this guy's like you know stall with freezing trap and then you know like drop creatures but i mean it's like none of it none of it honestly is really being all that scary that's that that's the fatal flaw of of this guy's deck is that for for all of his tricks and everything like that nothing he's doing is actually um i mean he, he basically his guys just aren't quite good enough to win in just a you know just a, a knockdown drag out fight and then now i've got enough card advantage that i'm i'm fine just dropping the uh Trading that. Drop a couple blood imps. We'll drop the demolisher, and I'll even get a free card draw and hit him. Now, I mean, perfect scenario. I wouldn't have minded if the. Uh, I was kind of hoping that the berserker would end up getting discarded for that, since it's a bit overcosted at the moment, but. I'm really shocked. I mean, I, I would have thought that the uh, the Demolisher that's going to start hitting him for two every turn for the rest of the game would have been the scarier thing there. Hey, give me a minute. <laughs> it's time for a little blood. I have too many minions. Oh. <laughs> That's not usually a problem you run into of having uh, too many minions on the board. 
Oh yeah, so that definitely went a little bit better. That that was more according to plan. Um, when and by that, the the plan was that I you know can keep a creature on the board for more than a turn without my opponent having the correct card to kill every single thing I play the entire game. Um, we will do one more here, and then I will take a break and um, split off into another segment. Um, so I, I'm, I'm happy. I, I'm actually quite glad that we went up against another hunter. I was uh, that first game. I, I felt like I mean, clearly, clearly, it was just me kind of uh, fending him off. But I mean, there was really no point. I, I think I think I did all of like four points of damage to him the entire game. It was just a just a slow slump into losing. Um, okay, so. Looking at this hand, I do not like any of these cards in this hand. I, I would rather not have any of them. Um, these two both die. I mean, they're both not cheap, like super cheap. I, mean, I guess the Swamp Poos is. But he's not going to have a weapon anyways. Um, the Gnomish Inventor, uh, four costs, and it dies to a power word uh, pain, or a shadow word pain. Twisting Nether, I don't need it at the beginning of the game. I'll, I'd will i rather get something that gives me some tempo. Okay, this is much better. I'm... I'm like I'm liking the the mulligan on that one cuz this sets me up for this sets my first couple turns up and it's it's nice too because on the second turn I'll get to get a free card and then use the voodoo doctor to uh to re heal that and then the blood nip will make the voodoo doctor a 2/2 two -two for one um so it's it's, it's kind of like a win-win situation So I'm going to guess like a questing adventure or something. Oh, no. I just harvest golem. That's not even really that exciting. Now, normally I'd consider, I'd actually consider, I mean, the Voodoo Doctor doesn't need to come out right now. I'd be happy. Um, since he played a two damage uh, creature, I'm happy to get my Acolyte of Pain out um, because uh, it almost guarantees that I'll get um, at least two cards drawn off the Acolyte. And that, that's usually my goal for any time I use the Acolyte. Or it baits out a Shadow Word Pain. I'm happy with that, too. Well, let's be clear. I'm not happy about that, but, um, you know, I something like that is going to hap is bound to happen sometimes. Okay, so I'm going to get the Berserker out, and I'm just going to... Yeah, let's get let's get a, a card draw here. Um, these Blood Imps work well with these Enraged guys, because it makes the Enraged guys harder... Or, like, anything that increases their health makes them harder to kill, and making them harder to kill means that they'll be able to potentially take advantage of that uh, enraginess uh, more. Hmm. Now, now, now here's where I would, wouldn't mind getting a... Uh, getting some sort of silence of my own, but that's not likely going to happen. Um, okay, so that killed the plan that involved uh, using the taking advantage of the thing. But he uses silence, which means that my questing adventurer is now in a good position to um, come out and play. Um, let's see. I play it. I mortal coil his guy. And then I play the voodoo doctor. And yeah, he Give me a quest. ends up being just deep enough to be scary. Oh, thank you. So then I heal myself. And that way he, I mean, because he, he was, he, he would use that to uh, basically get a free kill on one of my tutus and now he can't. So, so the real question is what did he just get? Um, be funny if he got the summoning portal i'm hoping he didn't get the faceless manipulator I'm, I'm kind of hoping he got the blue gill warrior because that's by far the the crappiest of the uh of the possibilities I wonder. <laughs> the summoning portal excellent oh that is there's a certain amount of irony to that. 
Well, speaking of summoning portals, uh, I'm going to get my own summoning portal out. And then that'll let me get my Blue Gill Warrior out. And then I don't like him having a summoning portal. I, he could have expensive stuff in his deck, and I don't want to see those. So I've got two more turns until he potentially gets mind control. Um, so I need to get him into a situation where he can't recover from the game by mind controlling my questing adventure and then using it back against me. So we're just going to go balls out on trying to uh, murder him right now. Um, So we'll get a taunt creature out, make him a little bit bigger. Then we'll get the faceless manipulator out and quest accepted. And he can't attack that anyway, so we'll get a little bit of extra damage in there. So yeah, he probably has a mind control in his hand, but the game's not gonna last long enough for him to play it. Um Best spell he could do right now would be a mass dispel. Um, and even that I don't think would save him. So good. That, uh, that definitely, I think, showcased more of uh, what... Uh, a warlock would ideally want to be doing. Um, you want to be. Uh, you're, you're, you're kind of. It's kind of funny. The the middle. You either want to have a really, or you always want to have a fast early start. But then the question is, do you try to kind of go off early game, or do you try and kind of sit on your stuff and bide your time and like set up some sort of ridiculous like late game um, blitz? Like you know, you just kind of. Uh, bait out their answers to things and then just start dropping stuff that they can't deal with um later i mean and i mean as you saw i mean i, I tried doing that against the hunter uh and that first game and that totally didn't work um because it it doesn't work if you bait out all of their answers and then they just draw more answers with every single card they draw is just another answer um that's but i mean that's how it goes i mean it's a card game there's luck um, involved in that and honestly that guy it wasn't entirely just luck of the draw there i mean it, it, i would be willing to bet that you could take any five or ten cards out of his deck and they would just be kick ass after kick ass i mean that seemed to be the case okay well thanks a lot um we'll be uh, hopefully having one or two more sessions like this um with the warlock uh, i can keep winning then we'll keep going so see you later